Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do another fun painting. So let's get started. We'll start off today with some white, and a little bit of yellow, and red. And let's come here to the bottom and just drop in a soft glow. This is going to be the bottom of the sky. And I'm just working this color in very, very quickly. It's not too important. There, set that brush down, pick up a two inch, and load it up with some blue and red, but mostly blue. Mostly blue. There. And let's, let's see what this looks like. Oh, that's pretty. So we're gonna drop the blue around the top here. Now we'll load a filbert brush with a little bit of yellow, very little bit of yellow, and white. And let's see, maybe right about here, somewhere. Let's just start brushing in some clouds. Well, actually, I know we're gonna have mountains, so let's focus the clouds more up a little bit taller, just in case. I hate to cover them up. There. And I'm rolling my brush in like this to create the soft tops, and then I'm, with, with very little pressure, feathering it back. So that what happens is you get, you get a cloud that is highlighted and shaded all in one stroke without wiping or reloading the brush, just by using different pressures. There. Maybe we want a big fluffy cloud today. Big one. There. Now, as you can see, I have a basic sketch on the canvas. And I'll take our filbert brush here and just rub in this area with a little bit of gray. This is just setting me up for a beautiful little soft mountain out here. Nothing too detailed or large, not today. There. Just rub it right in leaving a little bit of, well, roughness, because yes, you can smooth it out, but, but I think I'm gonna leave mine rough today. A little bit more rough, because it just helps to add details where you're not actually physically having to paint in all the details. When you highlight this, it just makes it seem that much nicer. There, nice and soft. Let's go slightly darker down here, but not much darker, just slightly. Next, I'll load up our three quarter inch brush with just a nice soft golden color. And this is our opportunity to go ahead and highlight our mountain because there's so little paint on the canvas. This is very easy. You, can, you could do it with the knife if you'd rather, but I kind of I kind of would rather have this one more distant than, than close. The, the knife makes some beautiful close up mountains. This one's a little too far away for that in my my painting and yours could be totally different there I'm just trying to give you ideas and then you go figure out exactly how you want your painting to be there a little more white nice now with the filbert brush and a very small amount of green black blue and white I'm going to go ahead and just begin to, to block in some trees back here, very distant trees, tiny trees. And we're just smudges of color than anything else. Some will be darker and we can do that later. I brought some of this mountain color down just a bit and then touched into some blue so that it looks like mist back there. Or very distant, distant trees. All we see is just the color. This is going to be an autumn time painting, so so a lot of this will have little autumn trees mixed in. There, and as you can see, I have a sketch on the canvas. This is just of a small, small river. There. Now with a nice dark brown color on a one inch brush, let's just begin to block in the rest of this painting. We're gonna do a lot of, a lot of covering here very quickly. I'm even gonna come up here and start Locking in where I know I want some trees. There. That way we can just put a highlight over them. You don't even have to worry about it. Maybe you don't want it sloping in like that, so raise up one tree in here. There. And we'll, we'll figure something out over there in a minute. For now, we're just covering everything with, with this dark color. 
slightly darker as you come down toward the foreground. Leave your, leave your rivers mostly open. It's okay if you cover them a little bit, but mostly open. Now with our filbert brush, I'll go through a little bit of yellow, red, and let's, let's put a little white into it. And as you can see, I have just random colors here on the palette that I'll be using. They're all beautiful, soft, golden shades of color. Now remember our light's coming across like this. It's not so much from the center. It's not like we have a, a big sun, sun ray, sunset or something right there. This is just like a, a bit of golden color at the horizon. So our light will be coming across like this. Maybe the sun's setting way over in that direction somewhere. There. And I'm just building up different layers of color. That's all it is. Leave a lot of that dark showing through. You don't want to cover it all up. Now before we go too far, I really want to just drop in well, a couple of trees right here. And they're going to go all the way down to the bottom of the canvas there. Or almost the bottom, somewhere close. Straighten out the top, make them a little thicker. Obviously we're not even close to to done with this painting, but it's not too early to put these trees in. There, one's taller than the other. I'm not even going to highlight them. I just want to know where they're going because that, that way I don't do too much detail here because it's just going to get covered by leaves and it just helps me plan out the painting better. We can also add a couple of small things in the background. Next with a very soft green color on the filbert brush, I'm going to turn it upside down and gently rub on some highlight. And I want to turn it upside down because this, this would cut through like a pencil. This one, layering it over flat like this, use more, more of the flat of the brush. It's actually a lot softer. There, because we're going to want to highlight this again, so I don't want to put too much paint on. I want it to just layer right off easily. There. And obviously this is only good for the background. You don't want to go smooth in the foreground because that would, oh, that would make it look flat. There. Now we'll begin dropping in some beautiful, beautiful light areas out here on this tiny river. It's not going to take a lot, just a bit, a little tiny bit. There. And allow some of the dark to, to sort of show through. You don't want to cover everything up. And maybe over here, way in the distance, we see a bit of this color, but not as much. Some beautiful little movements of water. Now using just the corner of a three quarter inch brush, I'm going to drop in a couple of beautiful leaves out here on these trees. There. And sometimes when we paint big trees, I take them right off the top, but today I want to see the I want to see the entire tree, but that's just completely up to you. If you want to do it a different way, that's fine. I'm using the, the corner of the three quarter inch brush because it gives me a beautiful, nice leaf shape, a close up leaf shape. There, you see that? Be careful when you're going over that background. Don't, don't allow your red to get too muddy. It's okay if it gets softened down a little bit, but not too much. There. Looks nice and close up and big. Fill it in a little thicker there. Now we'll begin to highlight with the three quarter brush. Just use a little light yellow and drop on a few beautiful highlights to these leaves here. It's not gonna take a whole lot and I really don't care if the color mixes together with the base coat or mixes with the other tree. It didn't make any difference to me. It's all just gonna be soft little leaves here. There. And all, all sorts of variation in color will happen because it's mixing with the, the background. And I do have a lot of red on there. It's not, I was not skimpy with my red. So it would be very difficult to get a pure color on here anyway, so I'm not even trying. Why bother fighting the paint? Just work with it and get all these beautiful shades. So think about it when you're putting your paint on. Think about if you want to highlight or not or what you're doing over top of it because it's very important. How much paint you put down. Now with the corner of our fan brush, we're going to drop in some huge grass here in the foreground. This is kind of the little section of land that 
these trees are standing out on. Maybe there's a bit of just the tiniest little dip right there. It just gives us a little more contrast and interest and all that, rather than just this land coming straight forward. Just leave a little dark to separate, that's all. Just a little dark. Ooh, there's some red. Not so much grass, so I kind of I kind of slid my brush a little just to create something different. Maybe like leaves or whatever sitting on the ground. There. Leave a little room for some liner brush work. Don't fill it all in with this tap down grass. Now lastly, we'll just do a little bit of liner brush work. I've got a, a soft yellow color on here. And I'm just going to drop in some blades of grass. Not too many, just a few to, to complement what we have down already. That's all. I'm not looking to like paint in every little grass blade. Just doesn't need it. There. Just adds so much to this painting. Having some beautiful detail. And it doesn't even take that much. And there we go. You can always put some dark ones in as well. They look great over the light areas. That provides some, some pretty good contrast. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching.